Alice Joven, who is Professor of English, Women's, Gender, and Sexuality Studies, Theater, International Affairs, and East Asian Languages and Literatures at George Washington University, where she serves as founding co-director of the Digital Humanities Institute. In 2023, she was named the inaugural, inaugural recipient of the Popular Culture Association's Bell Hooks Legacy Award. And the title of her paper is Open and Intersectional Pedagogy, Teaching the Early Modern with Generative Artificial Intelligence. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you Jane for putting together today's panel. Um, I'm going to be speaking about AI, generative AI tools such as ChatGPT complicate the inquiry-driven culture that we live in. Algorithm-governed inquiries and responses frame our contemporary life from navigation to scholarly research. One of the most notable features of current technology, of course, is the conversational interface and natural language uh, interface. In many ways, the natural, the arrival of generated AI with its celebrations and damnations is an old story. Technologies, technological transformations have brought cyclical adulation with worry since at least the printing press. As scholars, as Amen Jones and Jen Jarvis have argued, respectively, in the science of reading and in the Gutenberg parenthesis, both in 2023. What is missing from the current debate are humanistic insights. Uh, the nature of reading and writing in transistor, transistorical contexts. How might generated AI reframe students' relationships to the early modern? I see AI-generated text as a form of improvised performance. With my students, we have studied text generation mechanisms as part of a longer history of reading and writing, the long history of adaptations of Shakespeare, both early modern and modern, is fertile ground to examine more nuanced meanings than those that immediately meet the eye. Shakespeare's place as a drama provided us with key inspiration. At its core, here is an interlinked system of interfaces that regulate inputs and outputs. Actors work with prompt votes to for their cues. Even when scripted, performances of this same production differ in dynamics each night. Similarly, current generated AI draws on users' prompts and public's collective memories to create improvised performances. The same prompt generates cognitive but different outputs each time. The AI outputs are replete with repetitions, uh, repetitions with a difference, which makes them useful pedagogically. Like King Lear, whose question, who is it that can tell me who I am, prompts the foes with the answer, Lear's shadow in the body of text. We can develop reflexive self-knowledge when interacting with AI. If ChatGPT were to use first-person pronouns at all, it should use we, because it, rep it is representing anonymized public voices. Humans who interact with AI engage in a conversation with their own shadows. In the context of early modern studies, users' prompts reflect a particular kind of historical imagination and relationship with history, here is one of my uh, students' questions. I want to soon explore one of their questions early on in the semester. Um, and uh, that's for context. That's after that we've discussed in depth the like, question um, and, and images like this that have gener co generated with tools like DALI. Um, I believe AI provides a pixelated mirror image of ourselves. And so the types of questions that we do ask are important. Um, a lot of my focus is really on what kind of questions we end up asking. Right? None of them are innocent, and uh, this tool is magnificent because it is, as a mirror, it really makes you more aware of the kind of questions you are asking. We'll soon see some examples. Um, and how a question is framed, of course, already kind of half the story because that affects what kind of answer 
as you're going to get. Now, that's true with AI, but I think it's true with research in fact, right? So in the beginning, they asked questions such as, why did Shakespeare's contemporary audiences take boy actors for girls? Um, there are multiple problems behind this because it reflects our current cisgender, sexist, biases, right? And they use terms like cross dressing, a term not used in a very modern context. So I find myself teaching both historical knowledge and makeup cognition. My students progressed then from questions like this to something more open ended and potentially more inclusive. How did the early moderns practice gender? on stage, right? Uh, of course, it may appear to be more neutral on the surface, I just want to say that nothing is, of course, neutral, uh, but it's interesting to think about vocabulary would bring, bring, bring to history, right? Um, do we use contemporary vocabulary for inclusiveness? If we, if we use trans theory, you know, and what are the advantages? So, so it's not, that's what I call metacognition. I use AI as a heuristic tool to teach two things, metacognition and critical questioning skills. Sustaining passion for learning these essential skills helps students thrive in the inquiry-driven search culture that is now dominant. So there are two challenges, and I propose, uh, I propose solutions for each challenge, namely the singularity and uh, misunderstanding of critical thinking. So first, singularity. The AI's conversational interface generates text that simulate fluent human speeches, while search queries on Google leads to a hierarchical but open-ended list of links and sources. Similar queries prompt the generative AI to produce full passages that give the impression of a lecture or essay, sometimes with first-person pronouns, which can be mistaken as the only and ultimate answer to any question. The self-contained output gives a false impression of singularity and neutrality. A solution to this challenge is to promote metacognition and critical AI literacy. One way to teach critical AI literacy is this. When given a prompt such as what were the prevalent views of gender in early modern England and why, the AI proceeds to finish the prompt based on its meta mathematical programs co calculation of the statistical distribution of words in the corpora of human generated text. So it doesn't answer your question, it's actually completing your prompt. And I think that's a very important uh, part of the picture to, to always kind of, uh, drive home. It treats the prompt as a fragment of the text, and it has been coded to elaborate on that fragment as a form of autofill. So the large language model is an auto-regressive model, namely a, a statistical model that predicts future values based on past values. It is therefore able to simulate discourses about gender practices in early modern times from a 21st century perspective. Understanding the nature of this AI-powered simulation will enhance our metacognition of the knowledge in industry. We might ask, um, and for example, here, how and why does the AI recycle our contemporary cisgender sexist uh, vocabulary of cross-dressing when discussing early modern cross-gender practices on stage? In some contexts, students may be hindered from learning new critical methods because they tend to map new data onto their pre-existing mental maps rather than changing their mindsets to account for new information. And the second challenge here is mistaking synthesis for critical thinking. Current AI platforms excel in the task of recognizing patterns and synthesizing large quantities of text. The quality of AI output correlates highly with the quality of human initiated query. Moving forward in this inquiry driven search culture, higher level critical questioning skills are needed. I think critical question skills are more valuable than, uh, than the skills to summarize information, um, or even the so-called skills to solve problems. The solutions to combating the tendency to mistake synthesis for critical thinking is to teach AI as a heuristic tool through open pedagogies. 
But can you say that that forms the form of critical questioning skills, which goes beyond prompt engineering? Instead of writing traditional college essays that respond to instructor prompts, my students construct open ended, uh, focused research questions based on um, course materials. So these questions are collaboratively generated and we find through interactive class activities as well as discussion board. And this replicates some of the dynamics of social media and knowledge bases such as Quora and Reddit. So one platform that I used is called Pathback. There are other free of charge options as well. And you can take note of the link to try afterwards. So this one is free, it's at labs hackback.co slash question. This is a tool specifically built, um, it's a purpose-built um, large language model to help students hone critical questioning skills. So you're putting a question as simple as is Othello a racist, is Othello a racist play? That's not a very interesting question. It actually guides you to you know, why that is because it kind of closes it down. Um, to eventually uh, coaching students to come up with how does Othello's characterization reflect social attitudes toward race? Um, something along those lines. It actually, in the simulation, will give you, you know, your question might be answered with, you know, answered in these ways. And, and, and it will then suggest, you know, try asking some the other versions of, of that question. Right, so you will get increasingly sophisticated. I find it an interesting exercise. What I've been doing here, as you can see, um, it doesn't involve information retrieval at all. It is not an information retrieval mechanism. So it's not about machine about truth. Uh, so it's it's a form of brainstorming. It's not perfect, but uh, it does provide free tutoring from the clock. The interactive nature of these exercises really encourage students, uh, student buy-in, and really removes the motivation for cheating. By initiating the questions themselves, students are seeking answers using a wide range of tools. So we combine early English books online, right, EVO, traditional scholar databases, AI-enhanced tools. So what I'm doing is basically both acknowledging that that generative AI is part of the landscape, it's not going away, but also it's only one of the many tools for research, so that it won't become the, the only kind of dominant tool to think that everything, all the answers are, are contained therein. So students are transformed from passive receivers to active creators of new knowledge. With all of these tools at their disposal, and gradually learning um, which tool is appropriate for which context, right? I think that's an important uh, skill uh, going forward. So they can find in their research questions in the form of interconnected queries uh, for both AI platforms and scholarly databases. Research questions themselves are valuable new data points. They foster social networks of researchers. So, there is an overemphasis in American education to train problem solvers. Critical questioning skills are actually the first step to identifying problems to tackle. So that's uh, 